So we're now on to cycle 10, uh, displaying the lap times. So I've actually broken down the, the way we're going to display UI in the, in the game uh, into a couple of steps, partly because some UI is going to be displayed in screen space, and I'll explain that a little bit later on, and some of the UI is actually going to be attached to the back of the ship. So as the ship moves and the ship banks and yours, uh, the UI is going to move along with it. So there's two steps. One is displaying the lap times, because we want to see how fast we're going. Mike's best time is? 27.681 seconds. What's your best time, Andy? 27.6, no. 27.685. That's 0 .004 seconds slower than mine. Although throwing that out there. I only saw a screenshot, so he clearly just changed the text or like, yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is display the lap times. And what this is gonna do is every time, the game manager's hooked up, so every time you go through that final lap, or you go through the lap, it's gonna log the time, go to a lap time UI manager, and basically update the lap time. But first of all, I'm going to go through the UI and how we would set that up. So the first thing to do, or the first thing I'm going to do, is go to Game Objects or right-click in the hierarchy, and you notice that we have a little UI, a little UI dropdown. And this has a whole load of different options. Uh, these are pre-set up game objects or pre-set up elements that show things such as drop down, a scroll bar, a slider. To get you up to speed, so you have to recreate the structure of a slider every single time. And what I'm just going to create is I'm going to create a basic text element. Now what you'll notice is that when I created that UI element, it didn't just create the text object, it also created a canvas that the text element is a child of. If I select that canvas, and we can't actually see anything in the scene view currently, you'll notice that the canvas has a whole bunch of options. And we're not going to go through every single one, because again, it's a lot of sliders and a lot of settings. But the first one here is render mode. So screen space overlay will take the UI and it'll render on top of everything in your game or in your camera's render. So this is quite handy for having, say, pause menus or health bars or stuff that you don't want to be behind or have a depth um, uh, that's behind different objects. Next one is screen space camera. We're not actually going to use this one, but what this will do is it will take the canvas and apply it onto a camera. So this is quite handy for having UI that's like uh, in the screen but affected by, say, post-processing or 3D objects and have some depth to it. The last one is world space, where it takes the canvas and instead of rendering it onto the screen or through a camera, it instead renders it as basically an object and you can apply it and attach it to something, like a health bar above a character's head. Or in our case, uh, the speed and the current lap position, uh, the current lap number um, for the ship uh, on the back of the ship. One thing too, uh, so in this uh, particular project, we're using the two types. We're using a screen space overlay and we're using a world space. And we're not using that screen space camera, as Andy just said. However, in the, the director's cut, the enhanced version we'll be sending out, we will be using the, uh, the camera version, screen space camera, because we're going to have two players. So we don't want two overlays where the numbers are on top of each other. So each player gets their own camera specific canvas. And that's when we're going to use the overlay camera setting. So each player's camera gets its own one. So with that canvas created and that text element, uh, which just says hello, te uh, new text, let's say, uh, what shall I write, Mike? Hello, Austin. Actually, let's go full Mike, howdy, Austin. Howdy, Austin. I don't think I've ever heard you say hello, it's always howdy. Um, so this, um, using that uh, F to focus, so selecting the canvas, if we're F, we have the great big canvas in the sky as you can see here. So you notice that we actually have our canvas, determined by these white lines, floating as a huge thing in the sky. However, it's not actually floating in the sky in the game. If we look to the game view, you'll notice that we have the text, or the canvas, rendered in screen space overlay, overlaying everything in our final end game, uh, game view, uh, render. We don't worry too much about this being displayed in the scene, because our players are not going to see this bit. We only really sort of care about how it's displayed here. Now if I select this text that says Howdy Austin, this is the base uh, Unity default text for the UI. And you'll notice here we have very sort of basic uh, uh, functionality like text, and we can set different fonts and font style, and we can set it to wrap and position it and set colors and things like that. Um, but it can be quite limiting, and you may have to write shaders or do lots of other elements to make the text a lot more interesting. Uh, and we noticed this problem, so what we did is we um, acquired TextMesh Pro, which is an asset from the Asset Store, um, earlier this year, and we're now working on sort of integrating some of that tech into Unity over time. But for the time being, TextMesh Pro is now free to download and to use, and we're actually going to use TextMesh Pro, and I'll show you a run through of it now, of how many settings and how many different options that you get with this, uh, this system. 
So rather than sticking with this Unity UI text, I'm just gonna delete it. And then on the canvas, I'm going to create, go to UI, with TextMesh Pro imported, which this project already does, and that disappeared, so that's nice. You'll notice that we have normal standard Unity UI text and TextMesh Pro text, so let's create that. It's currently white, but one thing you'll notice is that on the right-hand side, we have all these options to play with. We can even add kind of faked lighting and emission to the text. Um, anyone who remembers or still uses like Microsoft Word art is gonna have a field day with this. Um, I'm expecting to see some pretty, pretty horrific, I mean beautiful yeah, that's um, right. text. So if I just get this to say, hello, Austin. Um, one thing you notice is that we still have the great big canvas in the sky, um, but changing the uh, rec transform or changing this box will allow you to determine how big the text box is and the position of it as well. So let's just position this in the middle. Or? You can also easily edit this stuff by turning your scene view into 2D mode. So this whole day it's been in 3D mode. There's actually a little button at the top of the uh, scene window there that says 2D, and when you click it, you basically lose the Z axis and you just snap to 2D mode so you can see it flat as an overlay exactly as it's rendering uh, in UI, or as UI. So if we have a look in, it says hello Austin. Um, what we can see here is one of these options on the component is a font asset. So whereas with Unity UI text, each component or each game object with Unity text would have its own settings, um, and people sort of go crazy and add drop shadows to some stuff and outlines to some other things. With TextMesh Pro, you actually create a font asset, and this will hold the material <laughs> settings. So you can create, say, a font asset for your header text, for your main body text. It's kind of like a style sheet, and then apply that accordingly. So when we come later on to having the UI, the screen UI has its own font asset to determine the style, so you change one and all the others will change, and the ship UI will also have the same thing. So here we just have the base uh, font asset, and if I click this, you can see that you can actually switch it out to different styles, um, but we're gonna leave it on just this one. We have a whole bunch of options, you know, very complex stuff like making the text bold and making it italic, um, and making it uh, set the vertex color to be a certain thing. You can even go, here we go, color gradient, if people really, really wanna do this. Hang on, let me just set this back to white. So you can actually choose a color gradient and choose a library. So we now have lovely uh, gradient in the vertex color of the text from top to bottom. Uh, you can also define your own. Yeah, you can create your own styles um, and things like that. Um, and when we scroll down, so this is just the component settings for TextMesh Pro. Um, when we scroll down, we actually have the font assets material that it's signed up to. And TextMesh Pro comes with a whole stack of different shaders. You can render things in bitmap, but what uh, TextMesh Pro does is you can render your text in distance field or sign distance field, which means that your UI, as you scale the text up and scale the text down, rather than rendering its kind of texture, it's gonna render the, the gap that it has from the edges, and it's gonna look really crisp at various different resolutions. So in this case, we have distance field enabled, and of course, there is uh, mobile versions of this as well, so lots of stuff you can play around with. You can even render sprites like emojis for all the millennials who wanna add that to their game. It's, it's very nice. Um, and when you modify and change things in these material settings, anything else that has this font asset will take those same options. So if we go here, and let's just change this to, I don't know, like, very sort of blue. Uh, we can then soften up the text a little bit. We can change the dilation of the text. This is gonna look so bad. <laughs> Mike, give me a color. Uh, gray. Puce. Adv advent puce. Um, <laughs> you can also specify a texture for not only the face of each character, but also the outline. So we could go, okay, I'm not really sure which one to choose. Which Sunrise one? surprise. Sunrise surprise, great. It's a type of yellow. Oh, okay. So you can see that you can actually uh, place texture on there. You can use a, uh, an underlay. Okay, this looks really bad. That's fine. I'm sure everyone here is gonna make significantly better stuff. Uh, you can also enable lighting, so we now have like a weird bevel. And um, first time I played with TextMesh Pro, I met the guy, I said, you realize everyone's just gonna add everything to it. He goes, my job's not to dictate what people do with it, it's to dictate if they can do it. Um, which is a very, uh, very nice way of getting out of that. Everyone spot. wondered whether or not we could, that no one stopped to wonder whether or not we should. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum, Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on. Um, so here I've also applied emissions. So you can see that you can actually, it's probably not a good idea to turn on everything, but I'm sh kind of showing that as you add all these different elements, it basically builds up your, uh, your end piece of text. 
And the really cool thing about this is if I now zoom into this text and keep zooming in and in, it will look quite crisp. And if we go into wireframe mode, it will render each text element as, I'm not sure if that's seeable on there. It's very dark. It's basically two triangles, whereas beforehand with Unity UI text, you'd add a shadow and it would like render the character again. You'd add an outline and render the character again. So it's very efficient. Yes. Um, so you get a ton of options. Now this, this, looks, this looks like a car crash, so I'm going to delete this. Really, really bad. And instead, we're actually going to use and set up, uh, we're going to use a prefab with already some lap time UI. Um, already set up and positioned with a nicer, um, significantly nicer style. So under the prefabs section, we have the UI folder. Inside here, we have the lap time UI. I'm gonna drag that into the hierarchy. And one thing you'll notice is that we have four text elements here, all using TextMesh Pro. If I select one of them, you'll notice that it has the, I uh, somehow managed to get the gradient in there. Probably Mike wasn't too happy, I'm not sure. No, that's good. And we have all these styles here. And each of these text elements uses that same font asset. So if I now, for example, uh, modify the offset here, or um, change the drop shadow to be, I don't know, like white, or, oh, that's a bad choice, like blue, you'll notice that they're all having the same effect. So rather than having all your text having different styles, you can create some for body, some for header, and some for different things. So we have this lap time UI. Now these are just placeholder for the time being. Actually, when we run the game, the game manager is going to update the lap time. So it'll start off by basically setting all the values to null or nothing. Um, yeah, so it doesn't just say zero, 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 zero. Um, and on this canvas, we have here, um, rendered in screen space, we have this lap time UI manager, which has basically got references to these labels, and this is then going to have the data passed to it of your lap time from the game manager. So with this prefab dragged in, we can go to the game manager, and here, it's looking for a lap time UI. We can click the little target, and we only have one lap time UI uh, script or lap time UI manager in our scene. We can select that. And now when we go into play mode, you'll notice that the element is then changing because it's started counting. And if I drive through here, uh, I did it in five seconds, so I beat the time, Mike. Damn. Oh, look, I beat it in 4-3, right. How are you going to win? Just keeps getting better. There we go. That's Human machine learning right there. Um, so yeah, um, and what you can notice is that um, the element is then updating with the current time. Every time you go through that final lap, it's then saying, the script is then saying, okay, you finished the lap, get the current time, send it to the lap time UI to update the, the relevant uh, Those UI were the element. methods in the game manager we skipped over kind of briefly because the UI didn't exist. All it's doing is it's passing some data to the UI and it's just writing it there as a string. And at the very end, we have a total or, or a sum of all these uh, numbers uh, or all these times, and then we can replay. So it's actually quite a short step, but it's a very fun experimental step. So if you really, really liked the, the abomination that I created, that's lovely. I'm sure you're going to do much better things because I'm not an artist. Um, but that is basically the step. So kind of to go over it again, uh, create a brand new canvas. And rather than creating the text element, just create a brand new text mesh pro text on the canvas, and then modify and change with the settings. Again, there's tons of sliders and tons of options, kind of like Cinemachine, so don't go through all of them now, but have a play around with the different material settings that you can set. Um, then when you've sort of had fun and finished playing with that, you can then delete that, and remember it'll store that font asset so you can use it again in the future if you really want to. Then bring in that lap time UI prefab with the elements already anchored to the top of the top left-hand corner, and then on the game manager, set the lap time UI to be the lap time UI script. So it's quite, it's a pretty straightforward step. So we switch over to the slides. In the hierarchy, create a canvas. Create the section for text. Do those things. Of course, you could bypass step one if you've already used TextMesh Pro, or you're not, you're not that interested, and pretty much go straight to step three. It's really up to you. <laughs> 